Hello, everybody. Long time no see. I'm just kidding. I saw you guys like three seconds ago. Well, if you click next on the video, I did. All right, so welcome to the Lighting 101 Speed Review. Now, this is the last time I'm going to be mentioning Lighting 101 in depth. But in Lighting 101, we covered the foundation of lighting. It wasn't just about hot shoe flash. It was about manipulating light, about how to create soft versus hard light, about how to diffuse or use specular light, and how to do these things to create certain stylistic effects. It was about tons of different things and the overall just foundation of light shaping. So before continuing with this course, I want to make sure that you all have a basic understanding of, well, these topics. And if you don't, guess what? We can't cover them here because otherwise, well, first of all, we already covered them. Why would we want to repeat the material anyway? But we can't cover them here because if we did, this course would be like another eight hours in length and it would be Lighting 101. So I'm going to say this. Those of you that have watched Lighting 101, just make sure that you have a basic understanding of these topics. Otherwise, if there's anything here that we reference that you don't really know, if there's anything that sounds unfamiliar, go back and re-watch that piece on Lighting 101. And for those of you that are smarty pantses that think, I don't need Lighting 101, well, first of all, shame on you because Lighting 101 was fantastic and we taught you how to do amazing things with just a hot shoe flash, which believe me, will come in handy in your career as a photographer. But regardless, for those of you that haven't watched Lighting 101, then just be sure that you are intimately familiar with all these topics here because otherwise, we're gonna be going at a speed and a pace that's gonna be really difficult to follow. Now, that's not to say that we're not gonna be talking through each of the scenes and talking through all the techniques here, but we're not gonna be going through and talking deeply on things like temperature, color temperatures, and you know, corrective temperature versus stylistic temperatures and that kind of stuff. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and just look at some of the key components of Lighting 101 and what you should know. And number one, I haven't actually thrown that slide in there, they can throw the slide up on the screen, is ambient light versus, uh, well basically ambient light balancing, okay? It's creating a natural versus a dramatic image. Next, we have the five common key light patterns. Understanding these key light patterns for flat, butterfly, loop, Rembrandt, split lighting, and what each, I, I like counted to five, but then I only had four left on my hand. That was kind of weird. But each of these are meant for specific stylistic reasons and each of them have a certain effect over your subject. Be sure that you understand that. Clicking next, we have our five common secondary light patterns. This is basically where the secondary light is gonna fall and what type of effect it's gonna have over the image. Whether it's gonna give you a fill light, a kicker, rim, edge, a hair, a backlight, or a background light. Now that we're taking the flash off the camera, this is gonna play a bigger part of lighting 201, 301, and so forth because we have more control over these things. Next, we have, well, basically the subject positions in relation to that key light. So are you shooting short lit or broad lit images or is it flat lit on the subject? Every one of these, again, has a specific purpose. Again, we're not gonna go through all the details here because it would make it very long. We don't want this video to be five hours long. Light qualities, understanding that you have soft versus hard light and neither one of these things is right or wrong. You have diffused versus specular light. Again, neither one is right or wrong. Each one of these different types of lights or these light qualities have different stylistic purposes in your images. So how to create those kind of stylistic effects and understanding what those do is absolutely important. Okay, next, HSS versus ND filters. Well, if that topic itself threw you off, you need to go back to 101 because this is all about sync speeds, okay? So high speed sync versus using a neutral density filter. This is basically all about controlling because basic types of radio triggers are limited or basically flashes are limited to a certain sync speed which is relating to your shutter speed on your camera. And that's one two hundredth of a second. So if you need to go above that, you either need to use a neutral density filter to cut down the amount of light, or you need high speed sync on a full featured flash. And that again, we talk about in depth inside of Lighting 101. All right, let's go on to the next one. We have the inverse square law. This is all about understanding how light falls off in a scene. How basically based on the light position, the fall off is gonna be much more dramatic than you possibly think it is because light's falling off at a rate that's exponential not at simply, well, a rate that you might think. Oh, twice the distance equals half the amount of light. That's not the way it works. Okay, so inverse square law is about understanding that principle and how to light large groups, which we're gonna be talking about in depth here. All right, let's go into corrective white balance. This is all about correcting that flash white balance to match the ambient light of a particular scene. But we also have stylistic white balance, basically, where we are using white balance to create certain types of effects. So let's go on to that slide. 
Let's see, there we go. We call it creative white balance. This is basically where we are manipulating the flash white balance to change the ambient light of the scene to basically get to dramatic results like you would see here with our lovely subject over this deep blue sky, which didn't actually look like that. But those are the basic principles, okay? So if any of these things sounded at all unfamiliar to you, or if you just need a little bit of review, then go back and review Lighting 101. If you haven't watched Lighting 101 before starting this course, I'd highly recommend that you guys watch it. Otherwise, just make sure that you know these topics in depth because we're gonna be going pretty quick from here. We have a lot of stuff to cover, and this course, well, we wanna dive into the nitty gritty and not cover stuff that we've already covered. All right, so welcome to Lighting 201. Let's go ahead and move to the next video now.